How are you doing? Yeah, good. I didn't sleep a lot. No? How was that working out for you? Uh, we played games and I drank coffee yeah. too late and then I stayed up till really late watching Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension and then... Couldn't I, sleep. And I couldn't sleep and then I... Yeah, and then I've, I've, yeah I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not all here. I'm not all here. And then I've had a, a stressful time editing the live show. Yeah. We did I mean, a live show though. Yeah, we did. So that's a success. Yeah. And but, I have now edited that live show, so that will come out next week. Yeah, ready to go on that. So I'm hoping to ride through this one on the uh, the pep of the fact that that task is now done. <laughs> and it, we've got a big one ahead of us. Well, <laughs> let's just get on with I it. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Space Jam Continuum, the show where we try to make a cohesive cinematic universe out of something that was never meant to be one. I'm Chris McLennan. I'm Carl Noble. And uh, we've got a lot to get through today because uh, we want to be at the end of 1947. Yeah, that's it. By the time man. Roger Rabbit airs, otherwise, yeah. otherwise we'll have to duck back into 1947 and Roger Rabbit broke some things and we thought it would. Yeah, so, well, yeah, so we, we kind of expected that. Yeah, we planned for this. So uh, I think we should probably just dive straight in. I think it's a good idea. Uh, so uh, we're watching a Daffy Duck and Elmer Fudd number called A Pest in the House from August 2nd, 1947. I'm pretty sure we didn't watch this one last time. No, we're, we didn't. We're a bit iffy about it. Have you checked? Yeah. All right, let's just watch it now then. Okay. <laughs> That didn't explain anything. Not really, uh, except that Daffy really cares about this hotel guest getting some sleep, but then does very little. Although in his brain, he's doing a lot to make sure that it, this guy gets sleep. I mean, he sleep. was doing a lot. He was just doing it badly, but we're, yeah. that's to be expected of Daffy. <clears throat> when was the last time we saw Daffy and Elmer together? Uh, it was quite a while ago, I think. Um, where are we at? It's Bugs and Elmer... Daffy and Yosemite Sam, Daffy Duck. Oh, quite, quite a while. Well, I'm just wondering, like, how, how, how are they? Well, when was the last time we saw Elmer? Because what? Well, basically, they're working in a hotel. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Elmer's the manager of a hotel now. Daffy is like the porter. Yeah. The, the the last time we saw Elmer was the Easter egg one. Okay, so. Not I long mean, ago. But that's Elmer recreationally, right? Yeah. So what the... was the last job we saw him have? Well, the thing is, we haven't really seen seen him with proper jobs really he's no, just, just kind of been stuff. having experiences and do you think ma- they like, finally like, took his benefits away yeah and now he's now he has to get a job but he's went straight in at hotel manager yeah i mean like he seemed pretty attentive he did yeah i mean like, like possibly he just stayed there at one point and just out managed the manager yeah so basically just took over basically the whole thing revolves around a guy who's come into this hotel and uh wants to get some sleep uh and Daffy's trying to prevent him from being woken up, but he's terrible at it. He yeah. often wakes him up. He's just, just doing stuff in his room while he's asleep. Yeah, he's just like cleaning the windows, and the clincher, telling the story. Is, the clincher is that this guy has uh, said that, you know, if he gets woken up for any reason, he'll uh, sock Elmer in the nose. Yeah. He's a man of his word. Oh, he does. He does that a yeah. lot. Um, but, like, ultimately, it's just, like, Elmer's got a job in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Daffy's not very good at his job in the hotel. No. That's kind of it. I don't really think that Daffy actually does work there. I think because he's the manager now. Well, because Elmer yeah. thinks he can just go okay, get Daffy, avoid, be, you yeah, be avoid manager, being punched, and then he'll get punched. But it turns out he just wants to punch Elmer. Yeah, I mean, he did say that he was going to punch him in the face. Yeah, he's a man of his word. Yeah, he's a man. It's, of his it's word. not. I'm going to punch the manager in the face. But like, I don't think this is adding much to the universe. No, nah, the guy got real angry though. Yeah, he got real angry. Like he's like in this sort of steam out your ears, red eyes kind yeah, of way. Yeah, like crazy eyes. Yeah, which we haven't really seen. But a lot of no. that could just be because he was really tired. Yeah, I mean, we have seen people like when they're being hypnotized, doing like sort of weird the eyes. The swirly thing. eyes. Yeah, we didn't see swirly eyes this time. Just red. Well, they, they, they were they got red swirls. Right, at the but end. They weren't getting... doing, were they doing the hypnosis? You think? No, no, no. They, I thought like... they just sort of filled up red. No, they, they, they were they were doing like a like a catherine wheel sort of spinny thing but not 
It, it didn't look like he was hypnotised. It just looked like he was real angry. But I don't know. I mean, Daffy did his usual bit. He shouted a lot. He laughed a lot. He, he did. He Tried to tell the guy a funny story. Made some, made some annoying sounds. Hit him with a hammer. Yeah. Like, you know. Got you, drunk next door. Yeah, got drunk with... Some guy we don't know. Like, like, he got drunk know. off camera. But yeah, I don't think that's answering much. And I don't think we should dwell on it for very long. No, I don't Because we've so. got like seven or eight episodes to do this episode. Yeah, I mean, like, like I need to start got... calling both things. I need to stop calling both things episodes. Episodes and episodes. Yeah, we've got this Hubie is an and Bertie next. We've got a bunch of cartoons to get through. What yeah. have we got? Hubie and Bertie. Hubie and Bertie. House hunting mice. They're the t- oh no, they're not the mice you hate. Hubie and Bertie are fine, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, Hubie it's, and Bertie are fine. It's Babbitt and Castello. Yeah, you can't be dealing with. Yeah. Uh, okay, well let's uh, let's see what Hubie and Bertie are up to. They're not with anyone else. Uh, so oh, it's a. It's a sequel to um, Dog Gone Modern Which from 1939. Which I can't quite remember. No. Like, I'm sure... Well, I was going to say I'm sure it'll become apparent, but quite often when it says it's a yeah, sequel... it's uh, never that's, a sequel. It's horseshit. Yeah. Or at least it's a sequel in a very sort of... Roundabout way. ...or peripheral way. Uh, but let's find out. Uh, we're watching House Hunting Mice with Hubie and Bertie from September 6th, 1947. <laughs> happened to the t- two curious puppies I, d- I haven't seen them in ages so like the 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 one we couldn't remember the one that this is a follow-up to is uh dog god modern where the two curious puppies went to like a house of the future showcase yeah and it had all kinds of gadgetry in it similar deal here yeah he would be better going to a similar sort of thing but uh, there is a recurring character and it's the sweeping robot yeah now what is interesting is that in this is you think that the sweeping character is just kind of following simple commands. Yeah, I don't think it is. I it reckon there's a up level of anything AI. you drop on the floor. Yeah, but once, but it, it's a step up this time because he sweeps up uh, Hubie One of, or yeah. Bertie. I think it's Bertie. I think it's Bertie. Uh, yes. He sweeps up Bertie and puts him in the bin. And uh, when Bertie escapes, he's immediately back out, sweeping him back up and bunging him back yeah, in. Yeah, so he's identified him now as rubbish that needs to be swept up, which shows that there is a level of AI here because this sweeping robot gets so annoyed, he puts his coat on and quits. Yeah, I mean, like, so... I, th- I But I guess, like, if he was built as a sweeping robot, but his machine learning had basically uh, moved him more into the realm of, like, prison warden... Mm. Like, would you be that happy, really? Well, if you're a cleaner, and then you, you, then it turns out you're, you're the screw at some prison. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is it's not that odd to see or to think that the robot could have AI because they stressed him out. He just had his moment. He just became sentient. Oh, it works. It is just the same way. You've got programming. You've got so you've yeah. got abilities. I mean, at the end of the there day, there was another type of robot as well. There was like a repair robot. Yeah, there was they a kind repair of robot. Smashed him up. Yeah. Well, they, they, they blew him up, They blew they? him up with fireworks. Yeah. Um, and then he, 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 the, the hand able to, was able to get to a repair button. Yeah, so it's repair. got a sort of Terminator, end of Terminator thing going on. Yeah. Like, where it's like, you know, it'll keep coming for you. But what was interesting is at the end, once it quit, uh, I think Bertie pressed spring clean button. And then loads of the uh, robots came out. Loads of sweeping ones, mopping ones, but all sorts. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of robots in there. There is. And we've got to presume they all have the potential to learn. Yeah, they, they, they all, but, no, but none of those seem to get stressed out. But there's a lot of them in there. Yeah. There was only one in the previous house. There was. Well, one well, that we know of. Yeah, I mean, like, but there's only one, like, employed even at one time until this incident. Yeah. Even in this house. And I'm just thinking, like, we've seen someone building robots of late. Yeah, we have. It was Porky the Third or one of his kin. Yeah. And uh, I'm, wa- I'm wondering if he's using think this he's house of the future to build an army of robots. Just to, so he's got the suitable workshop to build himself an army of army of sentient robots. Oh god! But then he's just making them sweep. <laughs> so... No, that's just the cover until he's got enough, and then he'll oh, just right. give them guns. And then yeah, but but he'll the thing just show, is, he'll just show them pictures of like his enemies do you think do you think that rubbish. will break their programming though like like sending them out to kill do you reckon the stress of war might make them break their programming and then they become sentient and won't be in his army anymore 
Possibly, but I don't think he's thought that far ahead. I think no. th- I think this would be the first time he'd go, oh, shit. That's probably got to do that something about help. that. But I was wondering, because like, the robot called for the repair robot, it did. right? But it, then it quit. Yeah, so well, it, was, it, 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 it wasn't repaired, then immediately quit. It was repaired, and then the, the, the two mice just kept smashing uh, records against the wall to the point where it just got stressed out, bunged them all in a bin, but filled the bin up, Went into the cupboard, put his coat on, put a note on the door, yeah. and left. The blowing up wasn't enough to stress him out to quit. It was the... It was the mess. It was just the, oh, God, I can't deal with this cleaning up after you bullshit. So... Well, then he's probably going to stay in... Uh, most of them are probably going to stay in Porky's army, aren't uh, they? Yeah, potentially. That's, Being blown up wasn't an issue. That's my reckoning. But it's whether or not killing's going to be an issue for them. I know, I mean, if, you because pro- d- if he's d- programmed them to sweep, he can program them to kill. Yeah, that's true. But do they, do you think he has to? Do, or do you think they're going to end up bound by the the laws of robotics, though? Well, I was. Uh, I, I'm not sure because, I mean, I, I think that is a, f- a fictional universe. It is. Like so, I mean, he can he can make them bound by those laws or not. That is but true. also, my thinking is like it's going to be easy to make them kill rather than sweet because, like, in the Tooniverse. Like, given the way things work, and I know we haven't really seen computers because no, they it's don't. nineteen, you know, it's yeah. nineteen forty-seven. Like, you know, there's not a lot of it. But do you think it's more likely in the Tooniverse uh, that you have to do thousands of lines of code to change a robot, or do you think it's more likely in the Tooniverse that you just delete the word "sweep" and type the word "kill" in? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it probably is <laughs> that simple. Because realistically, I don't know. it's like. I've got nothing directly to base it on, but like Toon Logic has thus far been pretty down the line. Yeah, like you know, yeah. it's, I, I can't imagine it's lines and lines of it's code. It's at best going to be like hacking in a film from like the late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, like you know, that's as complicated as it's going to get. I, I'd imagine so. You know. It's still like so. I reckon. I reckon he can program them to kill. Yeah, probably. And I reckon he will. He's amazing. I, I, I he reckon nice he'll EBM, definitely try. He had nice EBM in his kitchen. He did. Yeah. But what is interesting in the next episode, uh, we have a Porky Pig in this episode. Well, I think we should catch so, up with him. He's got. A, he's got. He's got some friends as well. But we don't know which one it is yet. He's got Charlie. He's got <laughs> Rags McMutt. Yeah. Little Orphan Airedale is the name of the cartoon. It's and from October 4th, 1947. This is the first appearance of Charlie the Dog. No mention of Rags McMutt, but I, that name rings a bell to me. It does, doesn't it? I can't think who it is, but Rags McMutt, I think, has come up before. I'm sure we'll find out. Let's have a look-see, then. We're watching Little Orphan Airedale, which is a Charlie, Porky Pig, and Rags McMutt number from October 4th, 1947. <laughs> So in premise, that was very similar to one from quite a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. So there's uh, a dog. In this case, he's escaped from the city dog pound, yeah. which I'll get back to. But um, he meets up with an old friend or someone he knows from his past. Yeah. And he tells him a story about how he sort of went to get himself a master in the city. How yeah. humans, love, humans love a dog. You just humans do, the puppy do love dog a dog. Guys. And it's, it's how we confirmed our... Uh, dog sub uh, yes. theory from like episode two, yeah, like of this podcast. Like it's an it's our oldest like oldest theory oldest that was theory confirmed quite quickly. Confirmed, um, and it was a very similar story. It was it's like him telling this other mutt who's sort of out on his out on his ass, like that. Yeah, you know, that's what you've got to go and do, and you you just go and play up and give them the puppy dog eyes and make yourself look helpless. Yeah. And they'll take you in. That's how you get into this, you know, good Cushy dom number. sub uh, relationship. Um, the fact that there's a dog pound. Now, like, we know these are sentient dogs, right? Yeah. So the fact that there's a dog pound, like it's a separate prison. For dogs. For dogs that want to act like... Dogs. Sentient dogs that want to act like non-sentient dogs. Yeah. That's very progressive. Yeah, I mean, like, like it's it's not the scandal that, like, you know, it, no, the, it, the, like, the, no, there's the, there's no it real would taboo be, about uh, it in 1947 here. Yeah, yeah, the, like, like, there's no taboo about it. it. It seems that it's 
an accepted thing. Yeah, but it means like I'm just wondering, like, do they in 1947 in the Tooniverse, like, you know, well, how how many different like recognized, like, I guess sexualities are there? Um, because I don't know. I mean, the thing is, as soon as you got... make a separate prison for people who like to act like a dog and be dominated, yeah. This is very niche. I mean, like, it leads me to believe that the uh, laissez-faire monkey government is probably still in power, or back in power. Unless it's actually ran by a multimillionaire who's really into that sort of thing, and it's just like, well, this is a great way of, you know, me having loads so of do you these think, dogs. Do you think so it's it, like, a, like a, a, some sort of debauched... Like pleasure palace, is potentially, that what you're yeah. Like, 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 not necessarily like, like you know, like sort of weird, like upper floor type. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily a prison per se. I think it's just a, a place where if you, if you want to do that and you haven't got a master, you haven't got a home. Yeah, then that, that's you're, you're welcome. Yeah, like by all means, come in. But you might have to do, you know, some stuff. You, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have to be because Rags McMart didn't seem keen on having a master really after after uh, Charlie's well, after finding story, out, yeah, after finding like, out what like he had to go through, a lot of effort, through. and I, I, I don't think that's. That's yeah, life whereas I could just go back to the dog pound where it's a bit easier. But that's what makes me think the dog pound isn't like, uh, you know, uh, some sort of haven for dog subs. I think it's, you know, I think it's it's going to be a prison. Yeah. Because also mean- there was an alarm. And like it was like we're yeah, going to get back. Uh, yeah, I know. But if but if you're going to go through the effort, or of is that making a, bit like, a chase dog- me, chase me? Yeah, well, but I'm thinking if you're going to go through the effort of making a dog pound, then you have to go through the effort of what would happen if a dog escaped from a dog pound, because that's all part and parcel of being a dog. Is if you're in the dog pound and you escape, you're going to get chased and caught. Yeah, I just... that's that's part of it. It's the same as wearing a collar. It's the same as living in a dog house. I guess they didn't, house I guess they didn't make much effort after the immediate. Well, no, just... so like I guess at that point it was like, okay, this isn't a consenting Chase. thing. Yeah, this is he's actually, he genuinely just he wanted, wanted to, to escape. Leave. He's the stealthiest uh, creature we've seen so yeah. far. He just became a sort of blob. Yeah, blobby shadow. Well, possibly, possibly that's his that's his tomb power. Yeah, unless you're shining a light directly on him. Yeah, he can just blend he's into the shadows. Just a shadow. Yeah, but. Yeah, so uh, it was Porky Pig was the mark for becoming like Charlie's master. Yeah, just just the same way as it was in the first one as well. So I'm thinking Charlie has heard the original story. Yeah, from whoever that was, because this says this is the first appearance of Charlie. Yeah, so it was it was was no, it was a different dog. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Rover or something along those lines. Yeah, but he's obviously heard that story. And thought, well, I can, I can do that again. Let's go out and find Porky and see what happens. But this Porky... Well, he was definitely trying for a human. But when he, I think when he saw Porky, he was yeah. like, well, I, you know... He's, but he's, the thing he's, is... He's, 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 he's right for it. This, this Porky, I think, is Porky the Fourth. Because he yeah. does not want anything to do with this he dog. He doesn't want the, the dog. The only time throughout the whole episode he thinks about taking this dog in is when he thinks the dog is ill. Yeah. Or, the dog, or he feels sorry for the dog. But he's not wanting... To take care of the dog. He doesn't want dog. a relationship. No, he doesn't. He just doesn't want, you know, a, a it, dead dog in his conscience. And it does seem that he is trying to distance himself completely from that aspect of the Porky character. So I think. Yeah, he's... I think so. I think I not because I, I I don't think because he is like re, like repulsed by it particularly. He just doesn't want. He just yeah. He doesn't want. He I mean, doesn't it's want not for him. To... No, and he doesn't want. He doesn't want people to identify him along with Porky the Third for having that characteristic. I don't think. Yeah, he's like, because I think the the truth must have outed at, at some point. I think about like you know the Porky the the swap isn't subtle. Like people know. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it, pe- it, a lot of people in the two universe. It's n- kind of hard to hide a dictatorship. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> if 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 they've annexed a part of the city. Yeah, but how kind of hard to hide? Yeah, but I presume also that Porkytopia for a while just maintained that Porky was all fine and dandy. Possibly, yeah. You know, like, for a while. like you know, like we, when everyone was like, "Is Castro? Is he still there?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, he's 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 yeah he's about. Well, yeah, okay, can we see him? Ah, yeah, he's busy. Look, some photographs. He's really busy. Well, we took a photograph today. Look, 
Look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, I, I imagine a certain amount of that went on in Porkytopia. But yeah. I, I think that gravy train's ended. I he, think so. He no longer has to... I, d- I don't think he ever has to maintain that he's the same Porky anymore. I don't know. I don't, and, and I think people have probably come to accept that quite readily because he was seemed to be doing very well for himself. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, a nice apartment. Yeah, real nice. And like, it's nice to see Porky back back in the money. So, like, it means that uh, Porky the Fourth is probably a, a little more frugal. Yeah, potentially. Porky the Third. Uh, although, like, we originally did think he was chosen uh, on like a number of criteria. One of which was that his uh, spending habits were similar. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's possible but that they were at the time, out. and now yeah. he's now he's went. Oh, hold on, I'm now making a regular income. I can't just go. Or on. That he's savvier than we gave him credit for at the start, and he wanted the job. Possibly, very, so yeah, very possible. Like, yeah, well, I'll play I'll, up to those tricks. I'll be because, like, he he's still got the stutter, but it's not as hammed up as it used to no. be. No, no, it's not. He was going in for it. He was like, he was like, I'm going to do all the Porky Pig stuff. Yeah, because I can see this going to shit. So he's, I think, he's done quite well for himself. Yeah, I think absolutely. Hmm. Well. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's my feelings on that episode. I, I, I still, I, I still reckon. I don't know. I still feel more that the dog pound's probably a is is more like a prison or like a boar stall or something. Yeah, I mean, if we can, I'm sure we will see more. We're going to see dog catchers. We're going to see dog pounds. I reckon. I reckon we we've got more information to come. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that is accepted in 1947 because we concluded that theory really quite early on probably yes. you know probably like 1939 1940 yeah, yeah no uh so you know it's been, it was very it's been a quick good while since then it was you know it's so it'll be interesting to see because it was pre-war yes yeah 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 it was it was very early on in the podcast series yeah uh let's move on then uh this one is called dog on cats it's Sylvester and Wellington. I don't know who uh, Wellington is. I'm sure we'll find out. Guessing he's a dog. I mean, I imagine so, but we've been wrong before. We have, that is true. We thought Babbitt and Cat Stella were going to be a rabbit and a cat. Yeah, they weren't. No. Mm. I still two think cats it's a... and then two mice. Yeah, I still think it's going to be a dog. It could be, because this was reissued as uh, dog gone cats. Rather than dog on cats. Yeah. Well, I don't know... I... I mean, it's I, a weird it is it should have been just issued as dog gone cats really yeah I don't understand why they would reissue it as that but there we go okay yeah I don't know what that word Sh- is should we watch it dog own dog own yeah let's just watch it and find out what that word is it's from October 25th 1947 dog on cats <laughs> that was kind of interesting uh, yeah. Like, there's. So, it's Sylvester and his mate, his unnamed mate. Yeah, who looks very similar to Sylvester, but is orange? Yeah, kind of. But, uh, like, Sylvester and his mate sort of tormenting this dog, Wellington. Yeah. I mean, it starts off Wellington chasing them, I guess. But then, uh, Wellington gets called in and, uh, made to deliver a parcel to Uncle Louis. Yeah. Uh, and he's told not to let go of it under any circumstances. And uh, Sylvester and his unnamed buddy see this as an opportunity to uh, have some fun. With oh, Wellington and they the do. But what's interesting to me is that when he's called in, he tells them to shush, and they do. Mm. And like, so that says to me, like, this is just sort of a thing they do. Yeah, like, like, it's, like, it's, it's possible like they're all housing. just yeah, they're all just buddies. They're all like, I don't think they're enemies. No. Because they, they, you know, I don't know. But weird. Wellington doesn't know them that well, because at the end, and he, at the end of the uh, the episode where he delivers the parcel parcel to Uncle Louis, it actually turns out to be dinner for both of those cats. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you just play in the street with whatever kids are about. Yeah, and like, you don't know who their parents are. Yeah, and it's just ah, oh, there's a kid. I'll play with them. But uh. Yeah, it was weird because, yeah, they're oddly obedient to him, but then it's the fact that the human orders, they override it. Yeah. Like, so, and and uh, Sylvester and his unnamed buddy seem to know this because they know he's been told not to let go of that parcel, and as a result, he can't really do anything to him. Yeah, and, and they will torment him, and do torment him. Oh, yeah. 
And in the end, he delivers it to her. He gets it to Uncle Louis, and uh, it turns out that's where they live. So yeah, uh, but yeah, it was that it was that that dynamic between them and the him and the other cats. That 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 was weird to me because also there, there there seemed to be rules like because the other cat goes up to him and slaps him with a glove like it's a duel. Yeah, just to make him conflicted. It's like oh well, I've got to honor the duel. <laughs> So I think that's what had happened before as well. I think you uh, choose to instigate a sort of like dog chase cat yeah. sort of scenario in a traditional dual format. Yeah, and then you have to abide by the rules of that, and that it, the rules also yeah. take into account if my master calls, I will be obeying what they say, and you're just going to have yeah, to deal with but that. But until then, I demand satisfaction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's yeah, that's how I kind of interpreted it. Yeah, no, I can see that. Uh, like, well, I, li- I like I like that there's a sort of honor code, a cat, and, cats and dogs honor code. Well, I mean, if if they wasn't, it would just be out in a war, cat, wouldn't cats it? Cats will cats will kill mice. That's yeah. fine. But we see like uh, we see dogs and cats like adult time, but I don't think we've ever seen a death, a, like a death from that. No, or like really anything particularly bad. No, they just uh, they just chase each other about and just pull pranks on each other. Yeah, because like that, that what they seemed to be trying to do was get him to drop the parcel so he'd be in trouble. Yes, yeah, like, it, 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 it is like you're trying to get like one of your friends in trouble with their parents. Yeah, for a shit and a giggle. Yeah, uh, and that just seemed acceptable. So that's guy's quite nice. He's given me a little insight into the yeah, nice. dogs and cats. Well, well, the sub dogs and yes, realm. yeah, because uh, I mean I pre- like we haven't seen a non sub dog in a while no it has, we haven't had a we, lot of... yeah we haven't had too much city time either yeah like, we've true. been a lot of time in the suburbs like a lot of kind of real niche sort of stuff it's been a while since we've seen the city. like you know they were the the like fat cats yeah like that they, they they owned all the businesses they were everyone's boss i wonder if that's still the case or may i, I mean it's got to be a bit more of a mixed bag because i mean we, we've well seen there's a lot more F, humans seen, in now yeah, there's as a lot well of humans in now We've seen Elmer running a hotel. Like previously, humans wouldn't have been allowed in the city. And no, that, that was only ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was. So and it, times change. I know, right? Yeah. It, but I mean, possibly a lot of the dogs that were in those positions have either been turfed out, and now the only positions they can find is, you know, in a sub position. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe it's. Yeah, the dynamic shifted that much that, you know, maybe. Maybe the dogs are having a hard time with it at the moment. Yeah, possibly. I mean, the things we like, we need more kind of city esque sort of times uh, to try and see and, you know, see if we can see any dogs working in construction or working in like yeah. as club managers. Because yeah, it wasn't where... all dogs were fat cats before. No. It was just that if, was there, just... Was, if there was a higher up position, it would be a Chances dog. Chances are it was a dog, yeah. Or uh, in, uh, unless it's government and then it's a monkey. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't think we can get much answers in no i mean it was it was a fun episode but i don't like yeah uh, it was and it was like it was nice little insight like yeah. i'd like to see more of these antics i'd like to see the i'm hoping the unnamed cat yeah makes another, a, another appearance makes another appearance because him and sylvester together they're a great duo yeah i don't think we're gonna see wellington again though because sylvester he didn't talk in this one but like he's clearly like you know it's I his buddy he's the brains and then it's just his buddy there but yeah like, he- well but then I suddenly thought, well, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe Sylvester's the chatty one, but like the, you know, one that's all the one who plans. invents all the tricks is and plans is the is the the ginger guy. Yeah, but it's like it, Penn and Teller. Yeah, I but always presu- <laughs> I always presume I always presume Teller is like the brooms. The like invents the tricks. Yeah. And I, I don't know why I presume that. It's probably it's not necess- it's not necessarily no. true. But I've always pre- like that's, that's just your assumption. Presumed, yeah, because he's completely silent all the time. Yeah, and he's and letting the guy take the talking. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I like I like this little duo he's got going on. And yeah, I'm a big no, guy somewhere for him. I, 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 I would like to see him again, but I don't know if we are. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, well, there's only one way to find out: is to carry on watching cartoons. I think so. Uh, so. Uh, Let's watch Slick Hair. It's uh, Elmer Fudd back in his element with bugs. Uh, it's from November 1st, 1947. It's we're going to be another we're classic. through this year. We are. We're very close. Let's do this. Let's do it. So he's continued in the hospitality industry. Yeah, but to take over an entire kitchen on his own and waiting staff. 
Yeah, it's it a, like just be him. Yeah, well, I don't like after the <laughs> Daffy incident. Maybe he's not too enamoured with the notion of staff. Yeah, possibly. Maybe he's in it if you want a job done right. You better do them all yourself. Uh, but he seems to be running a club for uh, humans from our world. Yeah, they're that they're, they're, they're realistic, realistic looking. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 there, there, there wasn't Bogart, many. Lauren Bacall, like, yeah. they're all there. there. Like, there wasn't many other tunes there. There, there. there was one person who was sat at the bar who I thought, oh, that that's a tune human. Whereas the rest of them, what, were... the guy who the your change sir guy? No, the guy who um, was drinking ate, the drink. No, the guy who ate the the olive out of somebody else's martini. I don't remember. What he looked, that, what he, that guy he, looked like. he yeah he 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 looked more like Elmer Fudd. But it seemed to be than, like very high end. Like dinner yeah. at this place was six hundred dollars, mm-hmm. um, which in nineteen forty seven is even more preposterous. Yeah, amount, an amount and of I money. think that was just a down payment. Um, so it's like you know it's the poshest of the posh, Swank. but like to the point where the exchange, like the the the, the way you paid at the bar, yeah. was to bring you you put a cash register there, yeah. And they took that, and you get mini and then cash you get registers, smaller and cash registers yeah. back. So, like that's that's the lowest denomination, presumably that they're dealing yeah. is a tiny cash register. Yes, um, full of cash, you can only imagine. But like, yeah. So I think like this is the start of a crossover, like where it's a bit more uh, publicly known that you can go to the tomb world. Like, well, it, it would seem that the like, upper like, echelon, the higher up, the yeah, upper, the, the, the upper echelon the upper are away that. The Tooniverse exists. It's like space. It's like space flights now. Like you can, yes. get, you can get you get up in a space plane. If yeah, you're super if you've rich. got enough money. Uh, but they can pop into the Tooniverse and, and have... Elmer seems to have landed himself. What I would can only describe as every job except the bartender uh, at this. Uh, yeah, this swank place. This swank place for for people from our world. The the conductor was phoning it in. <laughs> yeah, he had a jukebox. He he, he basically just taps taps on his little uh, little thing there and then pops. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because it's a goof. And like, uh, yeah, that, and that's people what loved ev- it. That's what everyone's yeah. there for. People immediately got onto the dance floor, danced, and then just sat back down. Like, it's just a room full of celebrities looking for toonish antics and and they get and, it and goofs and they get it. They do get it. Um, but largely it revolves around Humphrey Bogart wanting rabbit for dinner. Yeah, and uh, Elmer trying to get Bugs to do that. Bugs uh, evading him at nearly every Deathly. turn through a manner of disguises, as is his want. There was one part. Where he describes himself as Groucho Marx, yeah, uh, and then to sneak up on him, like Elmer uh, disguised himself as another Marx brother, yeah, I, like uh, which ones are which? Past Groucho, I, no, I can't it, like remember. eludes me all the time. The 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 frizzy ginger haired one, that one. Uh, why did he feel the need? If he'd identified that. Groucho Marx was not in fact Groucho Marx, it was Bugs Bunny. Why did he feel the need to disguise himself as a... I suppose to sneak up on him to also, try and... Also, Bugs, I know why he's got that outfit. Why has Elmer got that outfit? Maybe maybe, like, like, maybe he doesn't have that. I mean, like, maybe he just took it off that Marx brother. So what's he done with him? I don't know, tied him up under the table? I mean, that, that, that's subtle. Like, I mean, Bugs does get into the bit. Like yeah. so maybe you just didn't notice, but there's a lot of bugs. Yeah, getting well into the bit here. Yeah, but that is what bugs does. Like bugs is an entertainer at heart. As soon as he was on stage, he could not help himself. It's making me think of a. Uh, it's making me think of a question from the live show, and I can't talk about it. No, not yet. But Soon. we're gonna. We're, uh, uh, so I've, I've got to remember this for the episode after the live. Show. Yeah. But uh, like yeah, bugs. Bugs has to. Bugs has to finish the bit. Yeah. Like, there's so many times he could have escaped, and he can't. yeah. But I mean, the thing is, we're, like, like we've seen we've seen Bugs suffer from that before. We've exactly. seen we've seen a lot of the tunes suffer from that exact same thing. They have Bugs to... more than anyone. Yeah, though. like it's just like oh, I'm doing a bit, I'm doing a gag. I'm gonna just, just like, see when it's it like, through. When it's Daffy, I don't think it's it's that. Like, because I think Daffy would do it on his own. Yes, I think Daffy's just doing stuff. Uh, if if Daffy if Daffy thought up a gag and he started doing it his house on his Todd. He would follow it through, yeah, wholeheartedly. Because like, I, I think he's just there to entertain himself. Whereas yeah. Bugs, like, he's loving it. Like, he's loving the entertainment value. Like, yeah. Bugs is still the only one who puts his name up at the front of every time the portal yeah. opens. It's like, Wee. and like, and to do that, like, it, he must either know when the portal's going to open, which I think is less likely than he's c- f- come from the future 
back in time to every time the portal yeah, was opened and on banged him. his name up. And banged his name up and reclined <laughs> like, on it. And I'm I, in this in one. Like, so, yeah. you know, he's, he's vain. I think oh, yeah. That's my point. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, his reason for following through on the bit compared to, say, Daffy's, which is... He's just mental. A weird compulsion. Like, yeah. No, it's just he's just doing stuff. It's for his own entertainment. Well, that's it. Like, like, like Daffy literally can't control himself a lot of the time. Like, like I, I think he's getting better at it. But I think, where, like, you know, in the earlier ones, he, he literally just couldn't control himself. Yeah. The other thing is, so Bugs is trying to avoid being eaten all the way through uh, until Elmer admits to Humphrey Bogart that he uh, can't get him a rabbit. Yeah. And he goes, oh, baby, we'll just have to have a ham sandwich. Then. And then uh, Bugs is like, baby? And he runs out there and just gets on the plate. Yeah, presents because himself. Because it's... Lo- cause it's uh, Lauren Bacall. Yeah. And uh, Bugs is into that. Yeah, he like, really likes her. Now, so that's interesting because I, like, uh, it's, it's interesting to me that he is infatuated with a celebrity from our world. It's not madness to me because we know he, like, like of all the tunes we're f- sort of following, he, he is, just by the very nature of his powers, probably the most sort of worldly. Yes. Like, yeah. you know, he's, he's going to, like, because he can, you know, travel through time and space. That's it. So, like, it doesn't surprise me. It's just the first time we've really seen it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we don't know which Bugs this is. We don't know from which part of the timeline this Bugs is from. So it's possible that he's went back with the intention of meeting her because he's in that club just eating carrots and possibly waiting. But he does seem surprised that she's there, though. Yeah, he was definitely surprised that she was there. Yeah, so... Maybe he was there to off Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, possibly. And then slot into his place in our world. I'm kind of glad that didn't happen. Yeah. I, I don't think we need bugs on our side of the world yet. You <laughs> don't need him on our side of the world dating Lauren Bacall. Yeah. <laughs> That's too early for that. It's too, it's too <laughs> soon. It's too soon, bugs. Um, next one's called Mexican Joyride. Yeah. I don't know if I like the sound of that, but uh, we'll it's see how it goes. It's Daffy. Uh, he's been the least you know, like racist so far, I reckon. Should we do Porky Piggy Bank first before we get into that? I think I think we better. I think it's a good idea. I might not be in the mood after Mexican Joyride. No. Let's do it then. Go on. Okay, here we are then. The uh, Porky Piggy Bank. We're, yeah, we're back. Near, it's got near it, it. It's got in all it, its majesty. <laughs> it's got it's got some money in it. Yeah, oh, we we weren't nearly as much in the hole doing a live show as I thought we were going to be. I know, so, right? Uh, uh, well, obviously, thanks to you all for listening, but also thanks to you to all of you who came to the show and ate uh, a lot of popcorn. Yeah, and, and drank drinks. I've beverages. still got a lot of popcorn left, though. Uh, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't appreciated quite the remaining magnitude of the popcorn. Uh, but I, it's all right. Yeah, it's chewier now, I imagine. Than it is once slightly it more polystyrene just because it's a little bit on more on the stale side. But that's okay. It's you know, it was nice that people came. It was nice that people got to enjoy the popcorn, have a drink, and support the support the live show. They had fun. We had fun. Yeah. And yeah, like thank you to everybody who came along. Uh, that'll be airing uh, next week. Yep. Um, and you know, so if you if you came up and asked questions, you'll be you'll be in that. You Enjoy will. That. Which will be good. Uh, but there is other ways to support us, other, other, support other than us, just coming along to our one current good live show, which has already happened in the past. So. Yeah, because we can't really. We're, we're, we're trying to think of because it was a good evening. We're yeah. trying to think of other ones to do, other events yeah. uh, to do before Space Jam, because we don't want to wait a year and a half, two years to. No, because that was good fun. Because that was a good night, and uh, you know, I, I hope you all enjoyed it too. And I, you know, want to do more. So we're trying to think of some more things, but uh, there are other ways you can support us you in can. the meantime if you're enjoying the show. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one is if you listen on iTunes, please, please, please 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 give us a review it'll yeah. take you a minute and it helps us out so much yeah because currently you know well we don't we don't have a rating we don't have a rating like, we, we don't have like, a rating we're zero invisible. stars zero stars is what we have right now and i think we warrant at least one at least one good star what have you put in this gin that's a bit pineapple oh yeah it's stepping up the game. Uh, no, I know, I some pineapple. There must be money. Oh, by the way, we're drinking a gin. <laughs> so, 
I, I also had a pineapple. But yeah, if you can give us a rating, that would be fantastic. Because if we can get even just one star and we show up, but, you know, ideally it'd be nice to have five stars. If you ever think we're, if yeah. we're worth rating, we're worth rating a five stars, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But the, the, if you're going to give us one, you're going to give us five. Exactly. Uh, or if you listen to us on any other uh like kind Medium. of podcast subscri- uh, like subscription service anything like that where you can system. give us a review do it just yeah, do please. it it helps us out a lot you know either that or what you could do is you can uh, get yourself a one man band walk down the street trumpets drum you could you know, write the space jam continue on the drum you, know, yep. you could you could make a little porky pig to be jumping out the other side of the drum to that'd get be good attention that'd be nice uh, you uh, could get things I don't know like just printed on cups and then hand them out to people in the street and go oh do you want a, do you want a cup it's got the space jam continuum picture on it and they're gonna be like what and you're like, space jam continuum it's a very good podcast this is why you don't work in advertising so this is why I don't work in advertising uh, there is uh, you know one other thing you can do well according to Cal. I imagine there's a ton of other things you can do. Oh yeah, I've got I, more. Uh, if you head on over to kaiju.fm, that's uh, the network we're a part of, and click support us. Yep. Uh, if you can afford to and, and would like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, uh, if you can contribute to our Patreon, that would be uh, lovely. Yeah, a, a dollar a month's not a lot. It works out being about 25 cents an episode, even if you just listen to us. Yeah, so uh, like, please uh, consider doing that. Otherwise, we won't hold it against you. You're fine. No, yeah, we're you don't have to do this. that. Yeah, we're going to keep doing it for free continuously. But there's also a ton of other great shows <laughs> over on Kaiju FM. There is. Cal's going to tell you about one right now because he's self-serving and it's uh, his. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it is another podcast. Uh, me and Mike Harrison Wood, we do a podcast called uh, By the Mash Ton, in which we uh, we drink beer. We talk about the brewing process, and this all happens while we're in the middle of brewing beer. So in the middle of the mashing process, we're there drinking, talking, and doing reviews of the style of beer that we are brewing. Is Mike to a yak about it. It is, yeah. Uh, He's got a nice, like, dulcet tone to his voice. Yeah, I'm also in the advert, but it's not as nice as Mike's voice. Yeah, that's why Mike starts it, I reckon. It was a good idea. Listen to this good low boy. How much do you like beer? Do you drink it? Do you ponder it? We like great beer so much that we brew it. Maybe you do too, or are curious about the process and ingredients involved. Or maybe you just want to hear people talk about it. Come and join us by The Mash Tun, a fortnightly beer and brewing podcast by a couple of nerds where we brew some beer, drink some beer, and have a nice little chat about beer. You can find us on kaiju.fm or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just search for By The Mash Tun. Crack open a brew. Right, Mexican joyride. You, you I've been thinking so about forlorn. It, it might be good. Well, it sounds fun, but also like it's not, Daffy. Uh, Daffy has never let us down. That's true. And also thinking about it, like I know that they showed a lot of the uh, Speedy Gonzalez stuff, yeah, uh, and then they took it off the air in America, yes, and then uh, Mexico said, "Put Speedy Gonzalez." We back love on. them. So maybe, maybe they're okay with Mexicans. Yeah, and if they're if it's okay with Mexicans. It's okay with this guy. Yeah. Let's watch a Mexican joyride. It's a Daffy Duck number from November 29th, 1947. <laughs> Daffy Daffy needs to start using his rear view mirrors. He does. Uh... And stop trying to coax people into suicide. <clears throat> Either way, he's still my favourite character. He's awesome! <laughs> Even even with this, you know, suicide bit? I, I don't think he had any intention of that ball ever committing suicide. He was going to sell steaks. Yeah. He was even calling for people to come and buy those he, steaks. Yeah, he was. So Daffy, nah, he's great. Daffy's gone on holiday <laughs> to Mexico. Uh, he is excited about the food. Very excited about the food. But then the food is... But he seems, so he seems to know quite a lot about the food before he yeah. goes into the place. He's like, oh, bring on the hot tamales and enchiladas and all that. And yeah. He goes in and seems surprised that it's... Well, not surprised, but he annoyed that it's hot. Like spicy. Yeah, but I mean, there again, like when he opens his mouth, he has a crackling log fire in his throat. That's just right. So, you know, it's not that the food he... was spicy. It was... 
He'd put a log fire in his mouth. The food was physically hot because he had a log fire Sometimes in his mouth. Sometimes you just want a good, warming, spicy yeah, but... log fire in your mouth. <laughs> and This but... is just another way in which you and Daffy Duck share an affinity. You can't deal with your spicy food. You can't, you can't, you can't deal with a log fire in your throat. Unbelievable. That's, it, that's a good point. And I also wouldn't uh, have a glass full of 500 proof tequila to wash it down. I don't even know how that would work. What, 500 proof? 500 proof. It's the universe, man. Yeah, but like, that opens up whole new possibilities. Yeah. Right. That's another bit of toon science we've got to delve into now. I thought it was just How labeling... something be 500% it was just, something? It was just labeling on a bottle, though. I'm being very distracted here because our resident... Uh, marine, biologist marine biologist is here is eating is here. some food. No, you are? Oh, no, you're not no, eating food. No, he's taking photos. Oh. He's not eating food, but he is a marine biologist. So. <laughs> You, yeah, you are. He's, he's, he's bust into the room. He's confusing me. And now I've lost my train of thought. I don't know what Daffy Duck thinks about Mexico anymore. I know there was a bull there. There was El Toro, who was a celebrity, in fact. Yeah, so that's an interesting development. Because we've seen uh, Porky the Fourth as a... Toreador. Toreador. Yeah. Um, uh, well, before. no, it wasn't Porky the Fourth. That was Porky the Third. Was that not when Porky the Fourth was on the lamb in Mexico? Oh, actually, yes. It might have been. That's what I've been presuming. It might not have been, but I've, no, I, 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 I like. I think this. The, the, think I think the Toreador trip? was a lot earlier. I think it was a lot earlier because the thing is, is the Porky Fourth bit that like that is because Porky the Fourth went to Mexico after they came to our world, and Porky the Third and Daffy tried to. That is true. Well, they roughed him up, left him for dead. That's why we need a timeline. Then he was then physical he was, timeline. Then he was left for dead, and he and he was on the lamb in Mexico. That's when I thought the previous Porky the Toreador one was. Right, we need a lot of red string. Yeah, we need. To, yeah, we do need to do one of those like red string podcasts. timelines. I mean, that's kind of the job for the next two episodes. Uh, well, so that, ne- yeah. next week it's going to be the live show, and then the two after that, we're really going to try and collate the story so far. Yeah, our thoughts on like the agency and the portal, like really just iron out all. The like kids. maybe at that point we should draw a timeline. Yeah, I think we have to uh, because like. It's stuff like this, right? It's like, we remember Porky was a Toreador. We but can't we don't even, remember which one. Can't remember which Porky. Or so we're going to have point. to go back through this list. We're going to have to go back through some older uh, old episodes, episodes yeah. and work some stuff out. Because uh, what we're going to try and do is give you all a good jumping in point. It would be really helpful, actually, if uh, people who have listened to the, either that recently or know what we're talking about so yeah. like if, if we can get people kind of chiming in and helping us out that would really help us narrow it out even if you just go ah, uh, if you just listen to episode 20 that you guys did it's yeah. in that and then we can just listen back to episode 20 yeah that would be amazing like if, if when we seem confused we can't quite remember a detail if you if you just happen to know which episode that yeah. is in like that would help us out so yeah, much it would because we really want to give everyone a, a good uh point to start uh after the live show like yeah, so it like it sort like, of kick off a season two if, almost. If you've got any friends that aren't listening to it and they're kind of overwhelmed by the fact that we've got a back catalogue of you know nigh on fifty episodes, because we now. get it. We do because yeah. so it's why it's we a do lot the, to listen to. It's why we do the two universal glossary episodes. Yeah. It's like because I get frustrated with uh, any podcasts with an ongoing narrative that I'm listening to that don't have any recap. Yes. Uh, so we try and do like a catch up so you can sort of quickly plow through. But we're going to do a, a big one that's the story so far. It's almost like, a, you know, people can just come in and listen to that one and start listening. Because yeah. a year's worth of episodes, there's a lot to catch up on. It really is, yeah. But back to this bull. Uh, yeah. So the bull is the celebrity here. Yes. Um, now, that's interesting because that implies uh, that there's never an intention to kill the bull. No, it, it, because that's it. People, people are going to say El Toro. The Toreador that's in this is unnamed and nobody seems that bothered about. But also, like, because the other possibility is that the bull just wins all the time. Possibly. But no one seems particularly terrified that he's going to get gored to death. No. Including him. Uh, and Daffy is sort of complaining. Oh, the bull always misses. Oh, this, that, and the other. Yeah. So, like, so that's what pisses off the bull in the first place. Yeah, it's, 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 Daffy, it's Daffy's giving him shit. Uh, giving the sort of wrestling's fake uh, yeah uh, like, oh you, you, you're old you're clapped out you don't know what you're doing uh, and the bull gets angry and uh, mostly after that uh, oh, he, he dresses Daffy in the appropriate attire yep. and uh, they, they sort of duke it out 
Uh, Daffy's pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, and in the end, uh, yeah, he's well. He sort of does this cup trick with himself. And yeah, but with hats. sombreros. Yeah. Uh, and then makes a bet with the bull that he's not under the hat, and then t- wins all the bull's money. And then he says to the bull, like, "Oh, you've." You've whiffed it. You've whiffed you it. May your as well family, kill your kids, and your family won't be able to eat. There's only one way out. And he hands him a pistol. The bull shoots himself in the head, and I guess he's uh, not, pretty vacant in the head because I think the idea was that he's shot through. No, nah, see, because like the thing is that the bull said he missed. I reckon Daffy had loaded it with blanks. But then Daffy gives him a Tommy gun. He does give him, yeah, he does, he, and that definitely Asks isn't to take a couple of shots on him. Meanwhile, Daffy's set up like a, a steak stand, stand, yeah. and is uh, you know, you know, sharpening a knife. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the bull doesn't like this, obviously, and nope. in the end, Daffy's uh, forced to flee Mexico in the car, and the bull's in the back seat with the Tommy gun, mm. which is like so. The thing is, like Daffy was scared of him with the Tommy gun. So that's well, definitely not full of blanks. No. I, I really thought he thought the bull would kill himself. I mean, maybe. Like, like I know it's dark. I know you want to like. Yeah, I know you want to like Daffy. I do like Daffy. The thing is, is Daffy is the one who's is. done the least wrong. But he's that's also. True. But he is trying to poison the good tradition of, uh, you know, fake uh, bullfighting. Maybe he doesn't know it's fake though. Well, yeah, but he seemed annoyed that it was fake. That's, yeah. That's, so well, like, well he's, he seemed annoyed that the bull kept missing. Yeah. He, I think he's annoyed that there's not enough death in this yeah. bullfighting. And, maybe, like, 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 and maybe, he seeks to change that. Maybe maybe Daffy just wants the matador status. Oh, you've been blinded by duck science. Like, he's... He's not that bad. <laughs> and out of everybody... Out of everybody, the worst we've seen him do is try to convince a bull to top himself. And it they didn't. Don't. <laughs> and it didn't. That's the but, worst we've seen him do. It's still bad. I know, but it's not. It, he's a nice guy. He's just misunderstood. <laughs> he doesn't even understand himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to I don't know how to reason with you when you're like this. Oh. <laughs> Don't take Daffy away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to move on? Yes. <laughs> Let's move on. Yes, I won't for- I won't forget this. I'm I'm watching him now. <laughs> yeah, but we have to watch them. This is what we've committed to doing. <laughs> is watching yeah, but, them. I mean I am watch- I'm watching his every move. You now. like Tweety. Look how many things he's killed. Tweety's very open about it though. I like <laughs> he's a straight <trade> talker. <laughs> Oh, I, I, maybe I'll come to terms with that. I don't know. Who, who knows? Let's see how Sylvester's doing, and maybe yeah. he's good mate. Okay. Uh, in Catcher's Cats Can, which is from December 6th, 1947, and then we've got one more. Do you want you to say that three times quickly? What, which one? Catcher's Cats Can. Catcher's Cats Can, Catcher's Cats Can, Catcher's Cats Can. Nailed it! Well done. In that case, yes, I do reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Go on then. I reckon now there's some crossover. Yeah. That your more moneyed humans can go into the Tooniverse. Yeah, they can go in there as humans. They can go to Elmer Fudds. They can have a nice evening. Yeah. Like have some Toonish goofs. But also, it's functioning as a sort of like murder fantasy sort of situation. So in this cartoon, there's a Bing Crosby bird. Yeah. Which we've seen similar things before. We've seen most crooners. Yes. In there as various creatures before. There's a Frank Sinatra bird. He's been nearly everything under the sun in Looney Tunes by yeah. now. And Bing Crosby's trying to have uh, the Frank Sinatra bed offed by Sylvester. Yeah. So I think there's a safe haven, like the opposite of the hotel in John Wick. Like, okay. Uh, like there's a there's a place you're allowed to go to just do some murders. I don't know. They can't have an effect in the real world because this cartoon ends with uh, Sylvester basically Having getting, eaten. getting done in by Sinatra every single time. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Bing Crosby's got an idea and Sylvester goes, oh, I'll tell you, I've got an idea. And then the next thing you know, uh, Sylvester is crooning in Bing Crosby's voice, having eaten him, and he's just getting along fine with Frankie. Yeah. It, the thing is, is how how do the the humans from our side go in and not get not get dead? I don't really know. There must be some sort of... I, I don't know if it's technology on our side... 
that like puts you into sort of an avatar. Is it, well, so, is it, so you think like when ready, we like Ready like, Player One? So it, like when we saw them it, in Elmer's, do you reckon that was them physically crossing over? And in this one, it's them kind of in some sort of VR sort of yeah. situation. Yeah, I think that's so, the So they can, they can cross over in both. Yeah. Which means, oh, are they possessing the body of an actual tomb? That's what I was wondering. Is it more like Quantum Leap or is it more like Ready mm. Player One? Because the thing is, is if they... If they're possessing the bodies of actual tunes, and if those tunes die, nobody seems bothered. That's pretty dark. Now that is pretty dark, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to err on that side. That is of the this way. Ideal. Yeah. I'm going to tell you for why. It's 1947. Mm. Like, you know, we're only just getting VR to be sort of worthwhile yeah. now in 2018, and I don't think, and I've not seen a computer in the Tooniverse. No, what what I did find weird about that was it, it got it got a bit like a saw film at one point for me because yeah, Sylvester like, ended up with his mouth strapped onto the back of the the, the back of the Hoover and his tail tied up to the top, so he ended up being the bag and then was then just turned propelled. on and sent off just around the house the Hoover, and then filth. in the and it, fire in the fire. That's the second cartoon on the trot where someone's had a fire fire in, in the mouth. mouth. And the thing that that was it was like oh god the contraption it was just horrid yeah it was horrible and like and it, 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 he came a cropper to this a few times I learned a bit about tune magnets mm-hmm. uh, yeah like because they, they don't just attract directly they no no they, yeah they've got bend around corners the magnetism there is interesting yeah and incredibly powerful yeah uh, so I mean I, I well, and we specifically need more data, but in fact, it's, specifically it's, powerful yeah it's incredible interesting. Like, so yeah, he puts a Sylvester puts a magnet in his mouth and feeds uh, buckshot to the Frank Sinatra bird, mm. so he'll be metallic. Yeah, uh, and he just gets a bird cage in the face, followed by every pot and pan and uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, uh, like yeah, everything. Uh, so magnetism is going to be an interesting one to watch. Yeah, because that was a that, that felt more like a Tom and Jerry bit than a Looney Tunes bit. Yeah, I mean it's. <laughs> I don't remember at what point in Tom and Jerry that kind of comes up. I don't know whether or not, like, you know, maybe they, maybe their universes just share similar physics, yeah, or whether I mean, or if, not. If my recollection of Tom and Jerry is correct, uh, the point at which it comes up is every every point all the time. Well, what, to, like, constant like, magnet related, to, like like Tom and Jerry first first was aired oh, forty three. I don't know, know. thirty seven. I don't know. I just know I had bumper VHS. No, it was it was it was it was, was very it was it was very old. Um, it was round about the same sort of time as Lo- the Looney Tunes universe was about. Maybe so... they can take some tips. Maybe there's some crossover in the physics. Who well, knows? that's what that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking there's a possible uh, physics crossover there. Yeah, I mean, uh, because right? we, because we've got to assume that the the Tunes universe isn't the only Tunes universe. Yeah, we do. So, well, I mean, that is a bit spoilery at this point, but we do have to assume that we yeah. do have to assume the Tunes universe is not the only Tunes universe. Uh, and you'll find that out next week. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. Um, do we want to talk about Sylvester's drink problem? We talked about it a bit before, but, like, at this point, like, he's really down in the dumps, right? He he seemed very inebriated like whilst he was... At... just all wrong. Like, yeah, blah, 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 yeah he, was, he was very slurry. Uh, his eyes weren't quite fully open. He was very open to He'll do anything Big ideas. Crosby tells him to do. Yeah, like, even though when he was going through the... The backyard buffet. Yeah, he found steaks. He found all sorts in those bins. But yet, being managed to convince them, he managed that, to convince them that there were no vitamins. There were, yeah, it was like, well, that won't do you. It was you vitamins, need some vitamins heavy as well, because like uh, Frankie's like little bowl of seed yeah, has full a of vitamins, and it told him all the vitamins that were on there. So do you reckon the do you reckon the tunes just really care about vitamin content? I really have no idea what the situation is there because. Or like, do you reckon it's an idea hand, they've been like, sold from our side? Vitamins are good. Vitamins are good. Maybe they'd be just being sold. Because that's the first time yeah. we've really seen them mention that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's like, have they just discovered vitamins? Yeah. It's been Crosby been decided he's going to go and help them out on that regard. Well, that's well. it. I'm just wondering whether or not they've watched some... Because Frank um, Sinatra can't <clears throat> be in this sort of VR Quantum Leap situation, right? No. We've seen him as too many different things. And, like... And, yeah, like... 
Bing, Bing Crosby, like, it must be a simulation or just yeah. a bird that's a lot like Frank Sinatra. So thinking about it, even with the uh, sort of quantum leapish, you possess a body situation, yeah. someone in our world would have had to capture Frank Sinatra. Or, like I said before, it's like it's just a place people go for various reasons. Mm. Like, you know, like it's an experience. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. But Bing Crosby just thought he could get away with it in there. Yeah, and he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> it didn't work out very well for him. But he didn't die. Well, no, like, obviously. But it just, like, but he it made just it... catapulted them back. And possibly at that to, point it would have flagged up he, to he, the He wanted the satisfaction without letting Frank Sinatra know that that was his intention. Yeah. And, and he didn't. That's why it had to go through Sylvester the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's interesting. It is very interesting. The there's, ram- there's some dark concepts there. I don't know though. what the ramifications are for Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra in our world. That's that's the bit I don't know. Yeah. There's, uh, there's some dark concepts there, man. Yeah. Some real dark concepts. Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to continue. I think they are. Well, should we, should we do the last one? I think we need to do the last one in 1947. It's a strange one to end on uh, by our usual thing because uh, yeah. it's an a flea episode. But it is the last one in 1947. Yeah. Uh, I guess let's just hope it's got some Christmas stuff. All right. Because, you know, we only really get like a couple of runs of the Christmas <laughs> stuff every year. Yeah, and it doesn't do. tend to turn up much. And I am really, you know, I'm getting to the point now where I think our Christmas episode might just be another ramble fest. So uh, let's, uh, ho- let's hope for something a bit Christmassy. Okay, so from December the 13th, 1947, we're watching an A Flea episode called A Horsefly Fleas. Doesn't sound very Christmassy. A horsefly flees, a horsefly flees, a horsefly flees. Nice. Well done. That was pretty snappy progress from being burned alive to just sort of in a show together and having a nice time. Yeah, but I mean, I suppose, you know, a little bit of money splashed about solves a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I enjoyed that one because it was like a, a it was like a focus episode. Yeah. It was like a proper little insight into flea society. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, so, uh, the, so a flea. Yeah. Who uh, previously knocked uh, the littlest hobo off the top spot for the littlest hobo. Yeah. He's got another homeless friend now. He has. Horsefly. So making uh, the dog from the. TV show The Third Littlest Hobo which is this <laughs> um, so he, him and this this horse fly who he, he it's just a, a horse it's just with a wings horse fly yeah you know uh, he, they, he rides him over they, they find a yonder mountains which uh, is a dog yeah as is his want when he's looking for a home and uh, they start to set up shop there unfortunately there's some uh Native, native Indians, native Indian uh, yeah. fleas. So I'm Native American. I need. But no, no, what? No, no, no. The thing is, is uh, like, uh, uh, like in that they, they they are called Indian fleas. That's that's what they are. Is that type of flea like in our world? Well, I guess. Well, I mean, uh, I, well, I, I don't I don't know enough about fleas. Like 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 we would need a. I um, know oh, you just uh, you said it like and I sort of thought oh wait no is that a type of flea is it like a well no that that, it, that, that 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 was that was the name that was on the plaques it was Indian fleas oh yeah it will be but Native American fleas yeah but they are native to this dog like this dog was not bothered by the fleas before no like he's fine it's only when a flea starts felling hairs to build his little hair cabin hair log cabin um <laughs> and then it was the digging of a well the that of a annoyed well him. that really got to him. Um, yeah, they, they, it started to be a problem. Uh, but yeah, a flea gets in uh, a uh, to do with the native fleas. They have a little sort of war all about the place, uh, like literally all over the dog, all over the dog. Yeah, they're running about all it's over the place, driving him insane. So but actually, so the that's what bothers the dog is conflict. Yeah. So like it's like it, you know, it's <coughs> it's actual like what would be damage to a uh, to terrain. That's what. That's what actually irritates uh, an animal with fleas. Uh, so that goes on for a while. They get captured, but escape a couple of times. Uh, but then uh, one night marching across the floor comes a little f- circus, like, you know, a little circus train of fleas. And they move in on there. And uh, because they're going to chase him anyway, they become part of the circus. Yeah. And the dog just watches them <laughs> on his belly with a magnifying glass. And they have a lovely time. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got popcorn out and he goes, oh, this is brilliant. I haven't seen a circus since I was a pup. It's, you know, so that was obviously the last time he had a flea circus. Yeah. So, like, I, I like that 
uh, flea circuses travel from animal to animal to yeah. entertain that one animal. Like yeah. the the audience is one creature. Yes. and there's tons <laughs> and then, of things in this show, yeah. and that's what they're doing. How they're paid, I guess. I guess it's just in room and board. Well, I guess so. Yeah, I guess that's how it works. Yeah, like, can we just... live on you in a bit? We'll put on a show. Yeah, like so that's pretty good. Like <coughs> I like flea society. They actually seem all right. Like a flea. Like he was like, at the start. I was like, oh, this isn't really okay. Yeah, but like it was just a misunderstanding. Well, it was a misunderstanding, which admittedly at one point was going to result in him and the horsefly being burned to death. Yeah, like, like uh, so that was a bit much. I think the last time we saw him though was on Willoughby, and he had prospecting rights for the dog that Willoughby was inhabiting. Well, dogs so, are mountains, to yeah. fleas. We, so, we so, so and, and I think we decided last time that prospecting was a job, and as long as the animal you were prospecting wasn't sentient, it was entirely acceptable. Yeah, and this guy, like, we... like We don't know if he was sentient or not. Yeah, because we only saw him really sort of talk to himself and, to, yeah. and, and like, to the portal. So, it's yes. like, unless we see him interacting with other species... Yeah, it's, it's, very it's pretty because he didn't even talk to the fleas. To ascertain. Yeah, he just sort of we're like we're we're, get, we're getting a view into his mind, which is something the portal's done for us before. Yes. It's handy. Yeah, it is real handy. But yeah, I like uh, you know I like yeah, that. The, the flea society like, looks pretty it's cool. It's nice to end the first decade of the Space Jam continuum. Yeah, on like some people just sorting Get, just out getting their differences along. and getting along. Yeah, it it is really nice because we haven't had a lot of that. Yeah, and. To that end, I don't think I really want to talk about it any further, just in case we find some other angle. I like ending 1947. Should we just end on it there, a then? high note? Should we just end 1947 there? Absolutely. All right. So over the next, so next week you'll have the live show, and over the couple of weeks after that, we're gonna, you know, really try and like bang out the dents, iron out the kinks yeah. of, of the Tooniverse over the last decade, and we'll. Uh, bring you a couple of uh, summary episodes. There's also uh, a few questions from the live show that uh, either didn't get asked uh, or we've been asked since on Twitter yeah. or Facebook. Uh, if you uh, have questions that uh, about the film that we didn't um, cover or questions about really anything uh, over the last year yeah. of episodes. Now, now's the time to get in touch. Now's the time to do it because... Uh, We're going to be trying to cover them. Because we're gonna, you know, they may be really helpful. They uh, or they may be things that we do need to iron out before yeah. that happens. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, tune in next week for the live show. We'll be back uh, personally in a couple of weeks. Yeah. We'll see you then. Yeah. Um, bye. bye.